All right, hey guys, I am just jumping on live. Gonna hit record. Double this up for a podcast. So it's Thursday. And uh, hope you've had a great, great week. Uh, been getting lots of questions since last night's um, documentary. Uh, Michael Mosley did a. Um, no, it wasn't a documentary. Uh, one of his nutrition how to lose weight in 30 days type things. So if anyone saw that, drop a little comment below. Um, say hi anyway. But um, I want to, uh, it's got me thinking today. Um, uh, one, of, one of our members this morning was saying that um, it pretty much comes back to a lot of what we teach and preach at LPT. Um, uh, a lot of it just comes back to basics really, you know. Um, so I haven't actually seen the haven't actually seen the program myself, but it did get me thinking a lot about the the whole concept of calories, the sort of general narrative around calorie counting to lose weight, um, and maybe some of the some of the misconceptions that I definitely hear people talking about and, and definitely kind of see in general. So um, I want to cover a few of those. If you have any questions while you're, while you're listening along, then then hit me up. Um, we've been, we're getting kind of ready to hit one of our first six-week challenges, um, mainly focusing on members next week. Um, so any of you guys that are, that are LPT members, you need to watch this. I think it will really help you. Um, uh, so I want to basically just dispel some myths. I uh, want to share what the what I believe the world's best diet is, and it's not going to be as sexy as you'd probably hope. <laughs> and also, I'm going to talk about energy balance and one of the biggest mindset changes that would really help many people in getting great results, like weight loss results, but actually maintaining, sustaining those results long term. Okay. Um, so, so first up, I want to talk about um, where should we start with this? Where should we start with this? Um, okay, wh when we're looking at weight loss, number we all know that the biggest mistake a lot of people make is they they're sort of jumping into a new strategy, they're jumping into um, a new concept, and their mind isn't potentially long term. They're not thinking about what the results will want to be in a year's time. They're thinking about what can I achieve in the next seven days or how much weight can I lose next week? And that's why you always hear when people are talking about weight loss, you tend to hear people say, oh, I lost four pounds last week, Mary. Okay, um, they're, not, they're not thinking about this long term. So the problem starts there is that the strategy is generally not a long-term strategy. It's not a, a sustainable strategy. So I'm going to share with you straight off the bat, what I believe to be the world's best diet. Two factors, okay? Number one, it has to yield results. It has to yield, obviously, weight weight loss results, but then it has to yield results that achieve maintenance. For me, the best possible diet or strategy, I actually hate the word diet, but you know, people know what I'm talking about when I say diet. The best nutritional strategy is the one where you achieve a level of, if you want to use the word balance, where you can actually maintain a weight that you're happy with, that you're confident in your life with, you feel good about yourself, you have energy, you're productive, you sleep well, you know, you can exercise really well. That for me is where you've hit the sweet spot. And I think once you hit that spot, I think a good strategy is to have what I call a buffer. So a buffer is, is basically like three or four, maybe even five pounds either way, where when you, <clears throat> when you maybe lose too much weight, you kind of know, but also when you gain weight, if you gain that three, four, five pounds, that's the point where you, you kind of, you, that's like your switch off point. Like maybe the weekends are becoming too flexible, okay? So you're, you're allowing yourself to have that extra beer or that extra couple of glasses of wine or that, that, those extra snacks, okay? 
and you know once that once that that first pound comes on okay not a big deal right you can lose a two pounds three pounds in a day but when that fourth or that fifth pound starts to come on you, you want to have a buffer so that you have some boundaries you're like okay i need to reflect on a few things i need to reflect on my hydration levels i need to reflect on my daily activity levels um, and we'll go in we'll go into a few of those different sort of strategies okay um so so the the main issue with um the what i call the calorie conundrum is the massive focus that most people tend to have on simply calories in versus calories out okay calories in versus calories out um now i'm just checking i'm still recording here <laughs> um what i think is a is a much better way of thinking about your calories in calories out is energy balance because that's ultimately what we are talking about is energy balance there's far more to the amount of calories that you burn and the, the far the amount of calories that you consume than just the amount of calories that you eat and the amount of calories that you burn through exercise okay so i made i've made a few notes on a few of these things so here are the four that there's really four main categories of each okay so factors that in, influence the amount of energy no i'm using the word energy and not calories that you consume number one is obviously appetite right so anything that influences your appetite so your your hormones um your how your, your satiety levels so satiety meaning how hungry you are okay anything that affects those will dictate how many calories you intake then obviously the the food that you actually eat so the food consumed okay that's that's energy in so that that can be that can be influenced by many things that can be influenced by your environment meaning like your place of work if you've got if if it's the culture that people bring in cakes and biscuits on a friday then that's going to that's going to dictate your um your diet as well right your culture you know um different cultures like indian culture um african culture like different cultures have different food um choices right and uh, so that that can be a factor so all of these different factors can have um I, i'd say education as well like the more educated you are on nutrition that that's going to influence your choices if you know if i eat this this is going to do this to my insulin levels or my sugar levels this is going to have this effect on my mindset this is going to have this effect on infl inflammatory markers in my body then the chances are you're going to make some better decisions so there's a plus point for just increasing your knowledge of nutrition um calories absorbed a lot of people don't realize that just because you eat something doesn't mean you necessarily absorb every single calorie that you eat okay so um factors that influence that will be your age uh your health status your your gut health there's lots of factors that will affect just the cal how many calories you absorb how you cook food by the way that will affect it and then you've got psychological factors so you know your mindset stress levels um you know how well you're sleeping uh those those were all of these different things guys will affect the calories in. So notice there, I didn't just say it's just how many calories you eat. Because that that and this is the biggest issue. This is why I call it the calorie conundrum. Because because we've we've almost been bought into this idea that it's the problem is that people are just eating too many calories. And if you've listened to any of my podcasts before I always talk about this concept of the problem isn't the problem, right? So people think that the, their problem with their diet, for instance, is that they eat too many calories or they eat the wrong food. But actually, that is never the problem. That's the outcome, okay, of the real problem. And the, the, the key to nailing your weight loss goals, your diet goals, improving your health, the key is actually finding out and diagnosing what the real problem is that's the key so if you can say well actually the reason why i'm craving sugar <laughs> at 2 2 o'clock or or 10am in the morning is because i'm drinking 
alcohol too late. I'm drinking too much of it. That's disturbing my sleep. I'm, I'm glycogen depleted because um, when I wake up in the morning, I've drank too much alcohol. It's affected my sleep. We know that um, sleep reduces the amount of glycogen in the brain. So you want the sugar hit. So you're craving like bread or you're craving like sugary cereal in the morning. Okay. And then that gives you that, that dopamine, that feel good factor of getting your glucose hit in the morning. So then you get a big blood sugar spike in the morning. Then you get the sugar crash. Okay. And then you go through that cycle throughout the day. And then you have these energy ups and downs, these energy dips. Okay. So all of these things, so that the whole point is coming back to what is the what is the problem? What is the thing that you really need to solve? Is it that you is the problem not really your your diet as such? Is it that your your sleep is being compromised? Okay, um, cool, cool. So we're going to move on to um, the in terms of the energy balance. One thing I didn't go through is is what influences our our energy out. So I've talked about the four factors that influence our energy going in, but in terms of energy going out, so obviously energy burned at rest. This is a big one. Okay, this is a big one. So this is influenced by your body size. Um, it's going to be influenced by your genetics, your diet history. Um, it's going to be influenced by your your age, again, your sleep quality, uh, and it will definitely be influenced by your metabolism. Yeah. So this is one of the benefits of just, you know, doing regular weight training, lifting more weights. If your body has more muscle that it needs to burn or, or to utilize, then that just makes it easier to burn more calories at rest. So if you're not already doing any strength or weight training, if you're constantly just doing cardio because you're just trying to burn calories all the time, then you're actually working harder. You're, you're, you're not working smarter, you're working harder but not getting as good results as if you just work smarter with your diet plan, okay? Um, next up, you've got the actual energy burn through exercise. So this is why it's good to have a hybrid of energy that you burn through exercise and energy that your body burns through its own metabolism. So it's really good to have your hit sessions, to do your, your long, slow distance cardio, go for long walks, you know, um, get some good cardio in because we know that burns lots of calories when you're doing it, but then also getting some metabolic conditioning workouts. This is the sort of workouts that we do at LPT when we're doing like, you know, kettlebell swings with some body weight burpees and some press ups and some squats. Okay. So we're stimulating some muscle growth, but we're also getting the heart rate super high as well. All right. Um, number three in terms of factors that influence your energy out is what we call NEAT. Um, this NEAT, uh, I forget the percentage, I'd have to find it for you. I think it's somewhere between 30 to 40% of your daily calories is burned through NEAT. So this is the non-exercise activity um, um, that, that, you, that you do. So this is just like me, like you can see me fidgeting about. Um, you know, any, any fidgeters or people that are just on the go all the time, they never stop. You probably notice that most of them are relatively slim, yeah, because they're just constantly just fidgeting and moving every day. So they're always burning calories. Um, so if you're a desk worker or if you tend to not move about that much, then I would, I, would, I would look at how you can improve your need. Where in your day, you know, can you, even if you just put a little stopwatch on or a timer on, just to kind of every 15, 20 minutes, you know, get up, walk about, move about, move your body, and you'll be surprised at how many extra calories that you actually burn over the course of a day, okay? Um, and then the lastly, the other way that we burn calories um, is actually the food that we eat, believe it or not. So we actually metabolize food, um, I, feel, I think it's called thermogenous, um, where you're actually, your body's actually having, you think about it, right? Your digestive system, if you put food in your mouth, your digestive system is having to break that down, okay? It's having to go through certain processes to, to break that down, and the body's going to get warmed up in the process of doing that. It's going to work harder to do that. Um, we know that protein 
one of the benefits of eating high levels of protein. Your body has to work a lot harder to break proteins down than say a macronutrient like carbohydrates. So that's one of the plus points to getting more protein in your diet is you actually burn more calories just through the act of doing it. Okay, so, so hopefully that, that gives you a bit more idea of why it's not a great idea to just focus on calories in and calories out and look at how we can actually think about or strategize weight loss more around the idea of energy balance. How can I optimize my energy balance rather than just always thinking that you've got to eat less and move more? Okay, now um, I've actually created 10, 10 little strategies that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reel off that will actually help you with this because it's easy to say eat better foods. It's easy, easy to say um, exercise more. But again, like I said, the problem isn't the problem. It's not that you don't want to eat more healthy foods. It's not that you don't want to try and get more exercise in. But how we feel dictates our actions. So there are certain things that we can do prior to that to make it easier to do things like exercising more, eating the correct amount of calories. Okay, so number one, I had to put it at number one, is you, your sleep. Okay, your quality of sleep will dictate your choices more than anything else. Guaranteed. Okay, sleep is the optimal state for recovery. So it allows your body, your brain to fully recover from the day. Okay, if you've been training that day, it's optimal for recovery, for allowing your muscles to regrow, repair. It's optimal for resetting your hormonal and digestive system. So really focusing on good sleep is going to make everything else the next day far more better. Okay, far, far more better. It's not bad English. Far better. Okay. Um, now, so that's number one. And, and the thing about that as well is, like I said to you, it, it will regulate your hormonal system and your hunger system. So you will just, without even trying it, you know, how many, as a coach for 10 years, the amount of times people have told me that it's, it's just that they have cravings or that they just they don't know why they overeat. These are the reasons. It's nothing to do with they don't have the willpower. Okay, The hormonal system is regulating their brain and their choices. So if you can get better sleep, you're going to get bigger, better regulation of your hormonal system. You're going to get better um, recovery. Your metabolism is going to improve. Everything else will just get better. Okay, now, so number two is some decompression habits similar to sleep. So we, in, uh, in uh, at LPT on our six-week challenge, on the first part of the, the first two weeks, we have a habit-based nutrition program. We call it the perfect 10. And one of the habits is a decompression habit. Okay, we recommend everyone has one decompression habit each day, even if it's taking two minutes just to take some deep breath, do some deep breathing through the nose. See, see, see I, I need to do that. I realize I need to do that because actually I felt myself kind of like not being able to breathe out just normally and naturally because I'm a bit hyper. I've had too much coffee today. Um, so deep breathing, meditation, you know, going for a walk in the nature, getting like the, the weather's great at the moment. So spending some time out in the nature is really good for, good for your soul, good for you mentally. Um, but decompression habits will, will really help because when you, when you regulate your digestive system, going back to absorption of nutrients, your body can actually absorb nutrients better when it's rested, okay? If you're in a high stress state and your nervous system is actively turned on, what's known as a, a, para, a sympathetic state, then your body's ability to actually, actually absorb the nutrients, even if you're eating really healthy foods, is massively compromised. Most people have no idea, they don't understand that, okay? So if you can, if you can be in a de-stressed state, particularly before eating, it's gonna really help your absorption of the nutrients. And then the thing is, if you can absorb the nutrients, the good stuff you're eating, then that has a knock-on effect because then you don't feel as hungry after, okay? If you've ever had a meal and it was quite a good meal, like it was a healthy meal, but like 10 minutes later, you're still hungry and you feel like eating again, you probably didn't get the absorption rate. You were probably eating in a stressed state. 
So the next time you have that meal, take some time beforehand, do some deep breathing, okay? Get yourself nice and relaxed, okay? Try not to be watching telly or list like just just concentrate on enjoying your food have a conversation with your partner and you, you'll find that will help um increasing your 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 neat daily non-exercise movement so i mentioned this already but you know just doing simple things like you know if you park your car to work like park it further away so you've just got to walk an extra imagine if imagine if you parked your car like 200 meters further away than normal every day for like five for every day for a year. I, I don't know what that would add up to, but that would be an insane amount more calories that you'd burn over the course of a year just by doing that one simple thing, right? So have a think about where you can increase your neat amount, okay? Um, uh, what we've got next? Number four, improve the quality of what you're eating. Um, so this is, this is in an opposition to focusing on eating less. So most people when they want to lose weight, they, all they focus on is, I've got to eat less, I've got to eat less, I've got to eat less. I don't like that mindset. I like more of an abundance mindset. I say eat more, okay? That sounds completely contradictory to what most people tell you, but if you eat more of the right stuff, you actually, by default, will eat less than normal. Okay, if you eat more protein, if you eat more fibrous vegetables, for instance, those two are big ones. If you eat more of just those two things, like a palm-sized serving of protein at each meal, for instance, and you know some, some vegetables to go with it, you will gar I guarantee you will you probably eat about 20 to 30 percent less overall by the end of the day. Okay, um, got that. Gotta let that person in. <laughs> um, so that's number four. Number five is mixing up your macros. So macronutrient profile. Let's let Lewis in. Ain't got any keys. Um, so your macronutrient profile is your proteins, your carbohydrates, and your fats. Okay, so like I just said, the, a really good start is just to up your proteins, up your fibers. But listen, you don't need to spend your life going low carb either. So if you're increasing your activity level, for instance, you may find that you want to actually, um, you may find that you actually want to, you know, go, go a little higher carb for, for a change, okay? Um, or you may want to even try a ketogenic diet, okay? So a ketogenic diet is more like 70%, um, 70% fats, only about 20% proteins and 10% carbs. So the key, the key thing really, guys, is just mixing it up and, and not getting too focused on just one strategy. I'm just gonna have a quick look, see if we've got any uh, questions. Hopefully you guys are finding this useful. Let me know if you, uh, if you do have any questions on this so far. So where are we up to? Number four. Five, number six. Uh, so the next one, number seven, is experiment with the frequency and the timing of your meals and snacks. So again, uh, so for one of the things that I've been doing just since uh, lockdown, we were uh, we put together a 21 day advanced fat loss program for our members um, during the lockdown. And um, one of the things that we were testing was intermittent fasting. So Going back to Michael Mosley, he's a big fan of that. And yeah, I've got to say, I am too, to be honest. It, it, if, you, if you want to have a real focus on achieving your calorie deficit, then limiting the amount of time that you actually can eat just makes it so much easier. So the 16-8 the protocol has, has been working really well for me. Many of our clients have been doing that. It's actually really easy to stick to because all you're doing is basically just making your first meal a bit later in the day. So rather than having your normal breakfast, you're just prolonging that fast, okay? And then you're having roughly about an eight hour window where you would eat your, eat your lunch or your dinner, okay? So if you're, if you're really you know, wanting to lose weight and you're looking at a, a calorie controlled way of doing that, that, that can really work, 
quite well. Um, we've been we've been kind of helping our clients do that using uh, exogenous ketones. Uh, we had a whole podcast with Gavin Allenson on that. Um, the ketones they they really massively help with suppressing your appetite a little bit in a real natural way. Um, so that's something that you can uh, you can look at as well. Where are we up to? Uh, number eight. So tracking your food. Okay. Well, this is this is an obvious one, um, and it, and again, this is another one that's really important because many people will get a little bit obsessed about tracking their food, and they'll they'll think like you know everything is about the calories. So one of the mistakes with this is actually that the foods the labels that we see on food packaging um, can be anywhere up to twenty percent wrong. Okay, I think that's the uh, the quota is that they're allowed to be up to twenty percent wrong. Okay, any more than that, that they don't get to label it. But twenty percent is huge, right? Um, and the, and the same goes for even the cooking of foods. So de de depending on how you're cooking certain foods, will change the calorie amount, change the calorie value. So you do have to really take that into account and just not worry so much about you know, use the calories as a benchmark and that's my biggest recommendation is is definitely you want to have a metric you want to have a measurement but at the same time don't take everything as completely black and white so what we do with a lot of our members is we give them the choice they can we can use what we call the calorie counting made simple guide where we're just using the hand so the hand palm thumb rule which will measure out the proteins using your palm, the fats using your thumb, and the cup using the, the, the starchy and the non-starchy carbohydrates. For people that do want to get a bit more advanced, we have our own app where people can actually track their calories a lot more specifically. But like I said, it's never going to be 100%. We're just using these, these calorie trackers as a, as a bit of a guide. Uh, we use Catch Mercado, which is pretty much regarded as one of the most accurate ways of tracking your food. Um, if you just Google Catch Mercado, you can actually, you'll probably be able to find hundreds of calorie counters that will do it for you. I think the main metrics that you need is your height, your weight, and your body fat percentage. And it will give you a pretty accurate reading of your BMR, which is your, your basal metabolic rate. Okay, you need to know what your BMR is. Um, because that's the amount of calories that you'll burn just, just like me just sitting here doing nothing. Okay. Then if your goal is weight loss, then you can look at having um, a deficit on that BMR. So we generally look at about 20, 25% for, for new members joining us. And then we may tail that off a little bit as they lose weight. Okay. Um, an another super important thing that will help you in maintaining your energy balance without it without having to focus always on exercising more and eating less is making sure that you don't have any nutrient deficiencies. Okay. And now this is one that you, you probably won't find so much unless you go to the doctors or have some sort of bloods done. Um, but you know, whether it's magnesium, iron, vitamin D, many nutrient deficiencies will show up in your life and you in terms of affecting your hormones, affecting your hunger. Um, and that, that's, again, it's one of the reasons why people tend to gain weight with processed foods. Because what a lot of people don't realize with processed foods is because you're not getting nutrient density, you're not getting lots of awesome nutrients from vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, your body actually craves the good stuff. So we end up eating, overeating, because we need more of the processed foods to get any good nutrients. So even the foods that say low fat or low calorie they're not actually doing much for us because we're not getting the nutrients that we need from them. Okay, um, cool. So number, the last one is a system. Number ten, you you know, to put all of this together and to make it super simple because it, I know it sounds kind of like complicated, but actually you just need a system. You need a system that is easy. Well, a that you find easy to stick to, and b that you actually enjoy. You need to enjoy the process. So I've got to tell you, right, hands up, I probably cook no more than two or three times a week, okay? Um, I find I, I use my own meal prep service. So we LPT has our own meal prep service. I, 
I'm going to put the, the link in the show notes um, so that you can have a look at that site. You can build your own meals. You can use our everyday meals. Um, I just find it really super easy to, be, to have my meals cooked for me, sent to my home, and all I've got to do is warm them up. What, what I usually will do is I'll, I'll add some little like sauces or I'll add some, some chilies or jalapenos or some extra vegetables, um, but that works for me. Then we'll chip, typically you know, make uh, some fajitas or we'll you use gusto now and again for our evening meals. Um, on a Sunday, I like to make a big curry or a chili and we'll just batch cook that up so we have, I have some extra lunches or dinners in the week. And then bam! Like I, I do like to make some of my own brunches and breakfasts because I really enjoy I really enjoy a good egg based breakfast. Um, that will be one of my go to meals to keep me going throughout the day. Um, but there you go, guys. There's like ten strategies there that will help you hopefully think about weight loss, think about calories or what I call the calorie conundrum in a different way. And if there's one thing that you take from this from this podcast is is just to take your mindset away from don't you don't need to be thinking all the time of burning more calories and eating less focus more on what are the things that will help you achieve those strategies okay um cool 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 well thanks thank you for tuning in uh looks like a great weekend we're kicking off our six week challenge next week we are taking a few newbies on so if you're listening to this in time then you can drop us an email at admin at lifestyle-pt.co.uk. And if you're local to Kettering or LPT Northampton, then we can take you through this. Um, our coaching team will take you through this personally. So you can start getting amazing results. Okay. Thanks again, guys. Have a great, I was saying have a great weekend. It's because I'm off away. Uh, camping with the kids tomorrow so it feels like weekend to me Uh, so um, (laughs) no it's not okay take care everyone see you later